Until I get a better weapon, maybe I can deal with more than one damage. Ooh. I'm just kind of exploring. Ooh, yeah, we're getting, we're getting down there. Oh, my, hey, look, it's a southern... Hey! <laughs> hey! <laughs> All right. Oh. Uh, it's the southern ocean. Hey, See? look, it's a starway room. Weren't those in uh, Monster Village? They were in Monster Village. They were quite strong, they as I recall. They were very strong. They really messed us up. And since it doesn't seem like Repel is the... repelling the stronger monsters, I feel no. like we need to just stick to what we know. A regular old wyvern. I really... That's not my... That's. I'm going to say this. Hmm. It's not my kind of wyvern. <laughs> Hashtag not my wyvern. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I mean... Hmm. It looks like a squishy bug. It has kind of an old man face with a duckbill glued on. It's wearing some sort of bratty turtleneck. <laughs> not, mm, I mean, not. I'm not shaming the wyvern. I feel like you're shaming the wyvern. A I'm, bit. I'm not. I'm just saying it's not my. It's not. It's not for me. It also sounds like a weird sort of slang term for something. Shaming my shaming. wyvern. <laughs> oh shit! She shaved. Shame my wyvern. <laughs> Dude, you shave your you you shave your it, just, it always it, I, it, it came I, out that way for you. It came out that way for me. You say that too fast. It just becomes shaving your wyvern, which is a very uh, different act. <laughs> shave. I, some people shave their wyvern every night. Some people never do. But no matter how often some people leave their wyvern on natural. <laughs> no matter how often or how little you shave your wyvern. Mm -hmm. You should not be shamed for your wyvern. You should never be shamed for your... <laughs> <laughs> well, I, can't. I can't. I feel like it's an interlocking series of realities that just connected. You should never shave for your wyvern. <laughs> <laughs> or you should never be shamed for shaving for your wyvern. Or both. Your your wyvern should love you for who you are. I think the bottom Shouldn't line here is... demand you to shave. You shave if you want to. Wyvern be damned. Yeah. <laughs> now, <laughs> shave the wyvern if it wants to, wyvern be damned. <laughs> oh, no, no. See, oh, okay. No. <laughs> Only consensual shaving. Uh, of whatever the hell we're talking about, yeah. <laughs> but yes, just as a rule of thumb, I yeah. think so. The demon knight. I'm going to shave him no matter what. He has no hair at all. Some skeletons... Have hair. They yeah. keep it going, yeah. I've seen that in some fictions. No, I'm not a big fan of skeleton hair. No, not crazy about it. It doesn't really make sense to me. It feels like we uh, fall out. World of Warcraft? Those skeletons all had hair. That's, That's right. True. They sure did. They it's did. Kind of wet. <laughs> I like how you said World of Warcraft like it was something that I might not be familiar with. Have you heard of this game called... This little game world I've been playing. It's called World of Warcraft. I'm not sure if you've heard <laughs> of it. I've been reading this book. It's called The Bible. <laughs> um... And I've been watching this television did, program. Did Tracy tell you about the thing Seinfeld? that she did at work where she asked people if, um, mm. in a situation where she said that, yeah, someone was playing WoW, if they would know what what she meant by that? Yeah. And the vast majority had no idea. Really? Yeah. Which was just sort of bizarre to me. Like, I don't know. Huh. WoW is, like, Maybe the most nice. popular MMO of all time. Wow. Had... <laughs> Millions of subscribers has yeah, uh, um, that's that is kind of surprising. I always felt like that was common parlance, but I guess maybe not. What? I guess the her department tends to skew a little bit older than some of the other departments. Yeah, that's true. Maybe, maybe I'm just searching for explanations. Yeah, it is. It was just a strange thing to hear. It is. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Recovering Wowby. Wow wow, yeah. Wowby? I'm pretty sure that's the term. I should be allowed to create the, the terms. Mm -hmm. Wowby. That's cute. I think I've discussed my cat Richard, have I? In one of these episodes? Your cat Richard? <laughs> yeah. Did I not ever? What are you, I don't even know what you're talking about. Oh, it's my wow cat Richard. Oh, we're, uh, we died. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that happened. <laughs> Thou art dead. What else is new? We've become so powerful. Not even death we, stops yeah. us. We have to go beyond death. I don't know why it brings up a menu every time I stop talking to the king. It's really annoying. Maybe the king's getting sick of the fanfic that he wrote. Yeah. He wants a new character. 
that that's that makes him very much like me. He has altitis. He, he does. Wants to start the, the story over and over. That's why he was struggling to kind of define the character at, at the beginning. And mm-hmm. now that he's settled into a role, he's very uncomfortable with it. Mm-hmm. Less romance. So, your cat, Richard. Yes. Oh. If I really haven't talked about this. You really haven't. I swear. I don't, I, I don't think I've ever heard about I this. I feel like I mentioned this. It's not an actual cat. That's the thing. It was my it was my well cat. Did I not mention this other? I don't think so. Well, I had a character um, on WoW who was a hunter. Maybe I just talking to Chris about this. But I loved um, my... Like, you start out with an as an undead hunter, which was a later thing that you could do. It wasn't originally a class of ill. You could you pick you have an animal and you can tame them wild. You start out with a spider as a an mm-hmm. undead, which makes sense, I suppose. Mm-hmm. But I captured a cat, a red cat, on like the a coast. house cat. No, well, he was like a jungle cat. Okay. But the coolest thing was the undead are fairly small in terms of their character size relative to some of the other mm-hmm. models, like taurins or whatever. Yeah, like taurins. Yeah, exactly. Um, even humans, they're kind of smaller then because they have no flesh. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, but my cat started out quite small, and he was smaller than me. As you level up, your monsters get bigger. Mm-hmm. So Richard, my cat, ended up being like twice my size. <laughs> but like, uh, but you know, like it's one of those video game things. Like I, it, my previous experiences playing the game, you never had a companion. You were like soloing it literally. It's a much different experience to form, a, you know, silly emotional connection to your. You're playing it with a little partner. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? That um, makes sense. I love that cat and. But, like, you know, and I started with him way early, and he accompanied me all the way to, like, the Outlands and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, what makes it especially sad is that I the account is gone. Like, once they did something, it's just, I have no idea. It mm-hmm. does not exist Eventually, anymore. yeah, they purge accounts, I think. But yeah. it takes a real long time. you got to not play for a long, long time. It was weird. I just could not find any information about it, even. But, yeah, so Richard, the cat, is just actually gone he lives on in our memory that's true you know i, I, I mean, mean it's, it's kind of like real cats they don't last forever no that's true but i mean what's funny is i don't know some of the uh some games you can keep save files for you know for quite some time mm-hmm. well I, I i know that it is that way for a while because like I know on my Battleland account it still knows that I had I had a WoW account at some point. I, it must never. It, every once in a while, he emails me like, I'm "Sure, you don't want to come huh. back?" Yeah, it, I get I get emails from him, but uh, I've tried searching for the actual account name and it doesn't exist on the WoW database mm-hmm. anymore. And I don't really think it was that long. But you could always call him and be like, "Hey, my account still exists." Where's Richard? <laughs> <laughs> All I want is my cat. Oh, that's so sad. Although all you'd really have to do now is buy the newest yeah. expansion, make but, an undead hunter, uh, get a cat, and then use the boost to go to ninety. That's a really unpalatable yeah, experience. It's really terrible. Yeah. I get it's a it. Bad design I get decision. Because I never really hit cap ever, so I was never like a raider or anything like that. But yeah. Ah, uh, but that was but but literally my whole relationship with like with the character like with the game like it's not you don't go into wild playing because. It's like, oh, I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna have a little adventure with my fr- my cat friend. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, but honestly, that was the meta game that it became to me more than about, you know, instancing and everything. So it was like, by the time I actually got to doing instances in a group, um, you know, it was like me and Richard. Yeah. It was. You were a team. Yeah, I had nostalgia for it. We had got there together. Yeah. It honestly is one of my fondest video game experiences. I played a lot of WoW too, but that was my favorite. I didn't. I didn't play that much. Well, I don't think I ever exceeded level fifty in mm-hmm. any of the times that I tried to play. I liked the world. I don't know. I liked how big it was, and you could just wander across it. I just, it just wasn't. It wasn't. I wasn't crazy about it. I don't know. Part of it was like I always played, but didn't know anyone, and so I was generally just soloing WoW. Well, yeah, that's which is fair. not a very fun way to play. Yeah, I guess that's interesting because when I originally played it, it was with other people, but when I replayed it with Young Richard, mm-hmm. I was it was solo play essentially. I, I think <sighs> some of the way that you end up mm-hmm. playing MMOs for a, a long time is because you have social attachments, and if you don't have yeah. any social attachments, you eventually oh, just man. leave. Yeah, My, something else. Do you remember the game City of Heroes? I remember it. I never played it though. Um, I, my friend um, played it. He was like 
really into it. They had a huge like guild or clan, um, and a lot of like real life friendships came out of that for them. Mm-hmm. But it was sad. Like they played it for years and years and years. But they the company sold it or something, and they the, everything was shut down. Yeah, it all collapsed. Yeah, they even you know they tried to like petition it and everything, but it's kind of sad. Yeah, I remember that being a big deal. It was like one of the biggest. It collapses of an MMO and all. It had a very long time. very dedicated community for it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of sad. It was weird, too, even on WoW when they went to... Um, there's something about... I don't know, maybe it's kind of an old internet thing, too, you know what I mean? Like, you, there's, like... Obviously not literal space online, but there's something to the fact that your character or your representation might be in a particular place with other people you know mm-hmm. what I mean like when they went to an instance tool it's designed to like expedite the process but in in while WoW, last time I played it rather than queuing with other people on your own server like on your world mm-hmm. to join um, instances it did it across worlds and you kind of joined an out of game instance mm-hmm. but the upshot being you could never actually find those people again in your own game world to adventure with. Yeah, but that was an important choice because the earlier dungeons became so unpopulated that it was yes. almost impossible to make it happen. Yeah, I mean, it's in a single it's server, a especially a, a low population server, yeah. which were the ones that they always encourage you to make your characters on. Yeah, I, th- I would characterize it as a neutral decision, but it, I feel like there's some amount... It definitely changes the way you experience the game world. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It, there's less I'm here outside it. It doesn't really matter anymore. Right. Which I think is part of the magic of that sort of game. And you end up, you know, when you do those pickup groups, it tends to then be pretty silent. Mm-hmm. Unless someone's screwing up. Right, there's no real re- there's no really incentive to work with those people. But I think that's the saddest thing. You can't be like, oh, th- like we clicked kind of well. Like, you want to go do this? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Uh, Although... I guess there's something I, weird about, like... Yeah. Go ahead. Well, I... I, I don't know. It's not kind of along the same lines. When uh, I played Guild Wars 1, yeah. I played it off and on for a long time. Often just starting new characters and playing through some of the early missions and uh-huh. quitting. And then one of the times I came back and was just sticking around doing missions and, you know, just kind of going through the content a little bit. I did a mission... Mm-hmm. And one of the people in the group with me um, asked me afterwards, like, it seemed like you had done that before. Uh-huh. I, like, you knew where you were supposed to be and where you were supposed to go and stuff. And I was like, yeah, I, I kind of remake characters and I play off and on all the time and yada yada. And eventually, um, this person invited me to their guild. Yeah. Um, and that ended up being the thing that kept me playing Guild Wars for like a good two years straight. Oh wow. Um, being my main game and spending a lot of time with the people in that guild building those relationships, becoming an officer, all that kind of stuff. And Oh dang. And then Fallout 3 came out. Which I've told you how. Yes, Fallout 3 yep. was the was the precipitating event for me leaving Guild Wars was I wanted to play that game real bad. Uh, I am a huge Fallout fan. Yeah, that's Corey one of my, is, is like, hardcore into Fallout, especially yeah, Fallout one and two especially. Yeah, they're probably they're probably the games I've played the most or mm. beaten the most as a as a series or individually. Um, that's a good question. Probably, probably just in general, like in every possible respect. Mm. Okay. Um, with, with the, I mean, there are games I've played more. Like I probably spent more hours playing WoW mm-hmm. and. But it's not a game you beat, really. <laughs> right, right. And, yeah. Sadly, the game that I played the most is Counter-Strike. I know. Look. It's okay. It's like smoking cigarettes. <laughs> yeah. But, uh... It is oh, junk food hey, gaming at. at its best. Oh, yeah. See, I think there's a... Yeah, I don't know. There's a zen of, zen of Counter-Strike. I think it's... I think it's great, but... Um... Maximum Magic by 21? Oh, holy uh, God. Uh, get... <laughs> get... Get some! Get some! <laughs> Bring daddy cream or whatever he said. <laughs> Bring daddy some cream. <laughs> Should have brought my loot and sore. <laughs> that was, those are verbatim quotes. Um, it was a really that was a that was a probably a watchable stream. Yeah, that was uh, <laughs> real crazy. That was great. That was awesome. 
He had a big like Yoda behind him. It was yeah, awesome. he had a big like, Yoda. It was like watching him. him play. It was like three feet tall. It was a very large been. Yoda. Yeah. It was a it was a sizable Yoda. It's probably like life size Yoda because, as we all know, oh my goodness, it's a real life size Yoda. Mind blown. <laughs> Uh, Fallout One. I th- I think I think I've I've beaten that quite a quite a number of times. I honestly, if I've beaten Fallout One, it was once. Really? I don't and I, I don't uh, remember it. See, Fallout Two, I think I've only beaten once, but I played. Really? But I but I played it a number of times. Like I just probably yeah. haven't finished it. Um, no, you know that's not true because I've done I've I played it at least two or three times and I've done different different things. Both of the games you can kind of pseudo speed run or jump across. Like you can. Mm-hmm. It's not really sequence breaking, but you can go out of order. I mean, if you know where you, where to go to get certain things, like like Fallout One, like I've probably done the quick um, beat multiple times. My favorite thing about Fallout One being so old, um, in particular, um, is that you can do a pacifist run in the game. In uh, Fallout Two, I don't think you can really do it because there are some scripted there. Are, there are some things you must do. Mm-hmm. Um, at least the final boss. Which makes you wonder if it was even intentional in Fallout 1 that you could do that. Um, I it don't makes know. me wonder that. Anyway. Well, I mean, at very least, you can definitely build your character to focus on non combat skills if you wish to. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I think to some degree it must, be a, it must allow you to do so. Because there are usually diplomatic solutions to most of the problems. And the end boss. You can absolutely... There's multiple ways to defeat him. Right. You can walk in and kill him, but I think that's the most difficult. You yeah. can you can arm an, a nuclear bomb beneath a stealth way, mm-hmm. and then you can literally talk him into destroying himself by which convincing is... him of the futility of his plan. <laughs> which is not... Te- I mean, like, in the actual game world, it's not pacifist, mm-hmm. you know, because you're still killing things that are resulting in the death of creatures, yeah, but in terms of actual... actions result in the death of someone. That's not debatable, yeah, but the, uh, in terms of how you approach the mechanics, it's definitely possible. We were watching, we've been watching a little bit, um, we, we have a Chromecast set up in our bedroom, and we watch Netflix a little bit when we're trying to uh, yeah. get sleepy. One of the shows we were watching, um, lately is Alpha's. Which is a sci-fi channel original series mm. where it's basically X-Men, um, Interesting. X-Men in a more realistic setting, with more realistic powers, flavored as you know genetic mutations. Okay. Um, and there is one of these alphas that had the ability to, if she could get up close and whisper into someone's ear, uh, she could convince them to kill themselves. Well, that's um, terrifying. Yeah, which is like a crazy power. Like she had, you know. Direct control, but only if she could get right up next to them and whisper into their ear. Which wow. is kind of silly, but... There's a lot of That's really cool. cool interpretations of powers in that hmm. show because they try to come up with ways to make them make sense. Interesting. And so, like, um, there's a dude who's, whose whole power is super strength, but what it is is, like, he has a really crazy metabolism and control over his heart rate and the way his muscles work. Huh. So, like, he can sort of, like, hulk out a little bit. And it doesn't make him appear any different, but he Mm. focuses his concentration on, you know, all that physical prowess and it manifests into being super strong. Same thing with a guy who has, like, perfect hand-eye coordination where, like, he can stand 10 feet away from a vending machine and throw quarters into the slot. (laughs) Yeah, like... I don't know. Those are kind of cool. They're they're, they're just cool. I don't know. Yeah. It's It's a fun show, but, yeah, you just remind me of... Talking someone into killing themselves is oh yeah yeah basically that alpha power yeah it absolutely is that's interesting they really did they really did design it that way I think mm-hmm. well, they definitely designed the final boss encounter it just would the, it seems so strange actually, that they would too. that they would go back on that in the it sequel it does I think to I could be I'm probably way wrong but I feel like there was maybe some different people who designed worked on the second one yeah that tends to be what happens um, and it's not that you necessarily. I don't. I don't remember. I think, I think you can get through a lot of it without killing things. And in the, the there is like a boss you have to defeat at the end. But I think you don't necessarily have. To, you don't have to like fire guns at him yourself mm-hmm. in order to do it. Like you can rig a security system or something like that. Hmm. I don't know if there's a way to talk through him or not. I don't remember, honestly. But the, mm. Fallout Three really went in a completely different direction. It's a very different it's, game. I mean, it, from the first two. That's why, yeah, I was. 
It, it's sort of like uh, I, I complex feelings about this for a very long time. Yeah, I think I think it is just important to appreciate Fallout Three for what it is, and not for it being, you know, mm-hmm. something that was trying to succeed Fallout One and Two because, like, they could have made a Fallout Three that was much more akin to mm-hmm. the CRPG roots of Fallout One and Two. Sure, and they didn't, and I think. It wasn't because they didn't consider the option. I, th- I think they were trying to make something that fit what the market would buy yeah. into. Yeah, I think you're right. Because um, like, I feel like a lot of CRPGs that get produced now tend to be very lower budget. They're niche, yeah. And will, they're not like AAA I, releases. I think it's, I think it's an overall, overall trend that a lot of what used to be exclusively in the domain of the PC has now crossed over mm-hmm. with to um, consoles so the mm-hmm. distinction isn't as meaningful anymore yeah well, especially um, like once they started releasing XCOM games on, on the yeah. console um, that were a lot like well, the old PC X- XCOM games Bioware like, is a good example too because yeah. they a lot of I mean the classic Bioware games were alongside the Interplay and Black Isle PC RPGs mm-hmm. um, and Bioware is kind of probably one of the companies that's kind of continuing that trend mm-hmm. um, on consoles no, and you know, good things come to those who wait. To um, Wasteland Two was just released. This Have you played that yet? I haven't yet. No, um, I know. Kickstarted, and then you haven't played Kickstarted it. Kickstarted it. Well, I mean, there's a there's a Wasteland Two, um, which you know, I think they were trying to say, you know, it's not Fallout, but mm-hmm. um, it's definitely in the spirit. Probably yeah, almost definitely. more in the spirit than Fallout Three was. Yeah, I'd say so. Um, Torment it's is in the spirit out. of the first two. Torment and Pillars of Eternity. It just reminds me so much of how I really do want to play original Torment like through. I yep. It's what? just oh, intimidating. Yep. It's an intimidating the, game. That I replayed it um, a couple years ago. Oh, it's I'm like rapturous about all the Black Isle games. Like madly, madly in love with all of yeah, them. You evangelized to me when I was oh. when we were a lot younger. Yeah, and Since I definitely then, tried. It's just. My completionist, perfectionist side really has a hard time with those games because it is very hard to do everything right. Their maybe, choices. maybe, maybe I would approach it differently now than I did uh, you know, five, ten years ago. I think so. Because I don't know, I'm not as heavily about that anymore. I, I that game really is wonderful. Like I know it gets a lot of acclaim for a, a variety of reasons, but. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, it's just it, it is one of the most creative and mm-hmm. interesting and novel worlds in a game that I've ever seen. The, the Planescape, yeah, I, I really liked the Planescape universe as a as a kid too. Mm-hmm. Um, I had like some of the D and D books, so I it was a D and D setting. Yeah, and even on pen and paper. And it's just like speaking of things that like really spur the imagination, like we <sighs> talked about with Dragon Warrior, like yeah. Planescape, even though. As a as a yeah. world and as a universe, it is so much more defined than the Dragon Warrior one. Oh, yeah. um, you can still just imagine so many possibilities because it is designed to do that. It, oh, it leaves yeah. so much open well, to to the imagination. All of that stuff was so like formative to me. Like I I, I remember reading the Monty Cook's like Planeswalkers Handbook like over and over and over again because mm-hmm. it just describes you know like it describes the planes. Mm-hmm. But they're like you know they're they're endless and I don't know there's so much going on and, and sigil the town mm-hmm. that the the gate town it had its own <laughs> it had its own like weird like British ki- kind of inflected dialect mm-hmm. that was I don't know the way magic worked was different it was like it oh it, one of the central themes was all of its different factions which essentially were, were contr- guided by certain philosophical principles mm-hmm. and like in the in the in the planar world, thought can ma- manipulate reality, and mm-hmm. depending on your the alignment of the planes, and it, it is so cool. Um, and all that enters the game mechanically and in certain points or decision wise in tournament. Right. It's really cool. I just think the the <sighs> fundamental idea of any opening, any sort of mm-hmm. framed space, could be a portal or whatever if you had the right key. Yeah, was just so fascinating and yep. such a novel idea and huh. it just spurred my imagination in a lot of ways and like it still influences the way i think about things creatively like 
mm-hmm. when I was talking about my MMO idea, like one of the things I thought about was applying exactly that concept mm-hmm. um, to being the way to solve a world a, a world state is that you had to bring a particular item to a particular place and it would, you know, unlock a thing or do something, it, unleash the thing that you have to kill or whatever. Like, I don't know. It, just that idea. So... It's very so mis- powerful. It's very mysterious. I mean, like, we were talking about even just, like, how you can search random squares in Dragon Warrior, and yeah. it's kind of the idea. It's like, there could just be anything anywhere at any time. In the end, I feel like it, it is sort of bizarre that the choice is even in the menu, because I think it's only used, like, a, less than twice. five times. Yeah. yeah. Um, Planescape Tournament, I mean, there are sections, obviously scripted, but where you have to... It's just random places where, you know, there is a gate that is activated by a specific key, and... Mm-hmm. Are, and aren't there ones that it's just like, there's no actual clue. It's just like you have, you Ooh. can find a thing somewhere, and then you can take it to a particular spot, and no one would have told you otherwise unless you just That's, did it. I I cannot say for sure. Okay. There are lots of. It little... felt that way, but maybe I just didn't research mm-hmm. enough. Maybe I didn't talk to enough people. There are lots of little nooks like that in the game, though. Yeah. I mean, even if they're scripted, they make it. It feels strangely incident. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like. There's things hidden inside of the places you already were, or gateways in places that you wouldn't expect, the places that you didn't know existed. Yeah, it's really cool. The game's rad. They need. There needs to be a update of that the, game. There is. Uh, there's one coming called oh. Torment. Yeah. Oh, is that also, what that is? Yeah, I thought it was a it, sequel. It, it, oh yeah, it's not. It's not. If it's not actually an update, and it takes place in a completely different world. Um, but the world is designed by the person who uh, Monty Cook, who worked mm-hmm. on a lot of the. Planescape stuff? Because right now it's, it's, it's actively difficult to get Planescape to work. Really? I haven't tried it on a modern computer, I guess. Yeah. Um, on a Windows 7 machine, it is... Hmm. It's tough. I know I tried... Have you tried, like, the GOG version? No. I bet. That was the only thing. Is that I, I have the actual disc version. Last time I played it, I did, like, a, you know, high-res pack or something, and it just looks gorgeous. Yeah, I bet. Man. I was also in love with I, back in back in the day. I don't know that it got as much love, but I was a big fan of the Icewind Dale games. I I think it got a lot of love. I I, I feel like you weren't alone in appreciating those yeah, games. I, I thought they were relatively well, popular among CRPG enthusiasts. A lot of people either. liked you know Fallout was popular, Baldur's Gate people really liked, and yeah, those games were great. But Icewind Dale was kind of more. I think it kind of got the let's say dungeon crawler kind of thing. But it just had such an atmosphere to me. That was another one along with Planescape that I just. I can't really describe all of the ways that it just has infiltrated my imagination. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, you tried to evangelize Icewind Dale to me, but I think I never even started it, or if I did, oh, it was okay. like for five minutes. There's just something about that game. It's it's all in the atmosphere of that world. It's wonderful. Mm-hmm. It's frozen and cold. The first area you go to is called the Vale of Shadows. It's just like a a ring of walkways around kind of like a mountainous pit or valley mm-hmm. and filled with caves of the living dead pretty dope it is really dope I mean there's like giant skeletons and shit even in uh, Planescape there's that sort of thing it's just like it's stuff like that it's like there are the skeletons of giants wandering around the morgue protecting people yeah. in, the, mm-hmm. <laughs> in Planescape or in the Veil of Shadows you encounter skeletons and they'll talk to you you know what I mean like that's, that's oh, a thing instead of just attacking you yeah I mean like sometimes I think in, in one situation that you still end up fighting them but it's like they'll talk to you because they're, they're not they're not monsters you know what I mean yeah. like they have a duty to protect the tomb but you know I just want you to know we're not mindless we're yeah, doing this exactly. because we have to I just love it man that's funny it was such a cool world I don't know I, I think it was the remoteness of it mm-hmm. too it felt far away. Yeah. And it was, I mean, in the context of its world. It's that sort of thing that has always appealed to me. Fallout is like that, too. It is hard to go back to those games, though, because they do require a a significant time investment, especially if you're trying to Hmm. do things right or not make mistakes or... Yeah. Like, because it's easy to screw up a combat or screw up a conversation and then... Reload your save and save scumming is a real thing. Um, I, I, I feel like I feel like it's done a lot it, in those games because yes, the game lets it, you save literally any time. It is such a common thing that you do in those games that in Baldur's Gate two or at least one of the expansions of Baldur's Gate two, you're like 
if if you're familiar, if you can play Baldur's, the Baldur's Gate series from the very beginning to the very end with the same character. You start out with a level one character in the original Baldur's Gate, mm-hmm. the son, the spawn of Baal. Um, by the time you get to Baldur's Gate 2, like the end or Baldur's, the expansion, you're like you know level twenty, like you're basically like walking gods. Mm-hmm. When you're walking to the Underdark, there's a scripted sequence where you encounter another party of adventurers, and they insult you in the dialogue and start attacking you. You kill all of them. The game stops and rewinds as if they are saves coming, <laughs> and then they they change their they change their action in response to you. Is that's genius? It's glorious. Yeah, that's really funny. <laughs> That was one of my fondest memories of that. That's, That's so awesome. funny. That's so clever. There's so many. There's oh, hang honestly, on one second. 